Okay, try number two, and let's see if we actually fixed all of the problems from before. So yes, we are final in the game, number one between the team Justice for Telebili versus Bathroomers. The map is gonna be... Plateaus of Arrakis, FFA version, and it seems like we have some civilians here. We have also a lot of rocks. Okay, Malvin just quit. And it seems like there is 50,000 reclaim here, so... Uh, don't worry, Geze, Geze. They have actually fixed the team, so yeah. Everything is fine. But yeah, coming back to the game, there is a lot of reclaim. And especially if we actually zoom in, a lot of it, basically... More than half of it is gonna be in this little middle here, so I hope that we will see players actually go and duke it out there on those spots. And I see that I have already the small bug happening, so let me go here to FTX Commando, click on him, and go back to the Observer, so yeah. So, it seems like nobody's gonna go for any kind of a cheeky... Air first to go and start with the bomber factory. So for now it seems like all of the teams are going with a land factory into second air factory, so it seems like nothing really interesting gonna happen. But let's see the AI. What is the AI cooking? It seems like it's really faster compared to our players. As we can see that the actual Boofs to it, build power and economy are making it expand way, way faster compared to the human players. We can also see the AI going for the Megmarines, which is very interesting choice. An AI that is gonna raid you. That is unheard of, to be honest. Just look at the way it's actually expanding. This is very interesting. Although, it seems like the AI is the not only being the one who's gonna raid. As we can see a single Megmarine coming out from the farm sled here to go on a rampage. But the question is... Are they gonna find anything of value? We can also see that the enemy AI is actually sending two hunter labs together with a scout to the position where farm sled is actually pushing in. So this might be very interesting. We can see the Megmarine up there in the distance. Hunter in the first scene. And are they gonna find it? Okay, it seems like the Megmarine have been spotted. But because, oh no, farm sled, you are in for a rude awakening. As we can see the fires being exchanged as the Hunters are actually going versus the Megmarine. And soon enough, the Megmarine and a single Hunter are both gonna go and fall down. Honestly, this is quite hilarious. I have never seen a player try to raid someone else and just get fallen by the enemy AI. So yeah, that is kind of hilarious. But let's see what is the red AI gonna do. Yep, it's actually gonna send the labs to the other side. And it's most likely gonna go and catch this expanding engineer here, because there is no one or nothing protecting it. Especially, I'm not sure that making a Fobo here was the right idea. On the other hand, I can hear some Mantis shooting here, around. Oh, okay, it seems like the Mantis from... Who is it? from Delhi actually found the striker belonging to Ark Simcat and finished him off. It took quite a lot of damage, but well, killing a single tank and a scout is gonna be enough to make sure that the enemy cannot go and expand fast to the corners. And as such, with the engineer and tank being killed, it seems like Sladonov is actually gonna make a really nice T1 airdrop here with his own engineers, securing the bottom plateau. Which honestly, most likely should belong to the team Justice for Telebiri. 
as Mr. Arxiv got his really close to it. I'm just surprised that he didn't actually move a single engine into this position. The Cleave built a factory here and expand to the right side. Okay. The AI is actually duking it out versus the other AI. But the ACU <coughs> belonging to Delhi is gonna be sure to come in here. And with his ACU actually joining the fray, it means that this bottom corner here is gonna belong to the team Bathroomers just fine. Oh no, he sniped the radar! And now a really nice micro coming up from him. Yeah, this is what hover bombing should look like. This is just beautiful. As Ark Simcat is proving that he might be just kind of rusty, but he still knows how to micro his units. As a single bomber not only managed to go and snipe the enemy radar, but also finish off four of the enemy engineers. So unfortunately, the two factories are already up and running, and with the ACU belonging to Delhi coming in here to support it, it's gonna be really hard to go and grab control over it. Or should I say, regain control. Though thankfully, on the other side of the map, we can see that the ACU belonging to Insidious Loop and to the Wheelie are actually gonna go and push in versus the uh, small base belonging to Banani Loop, also known as currently going by the name of Lunishko. The T1PD is gonna go to prove a small nuisance to the enemy, as we can see that he's gonna go and pick up five of the enemy T1 light tanks. How with the ACU belonging to Lily also joining this position here, it seems like Lunishko is actually not gonna retain control over this part of the map. Also, thanks a lot Kilashi, or should I say Fergal, for the glorious donation of 1000 bits. I really appreciate it. And yes, that was a really great start for our little AI friends. There is a T1 drop, let's see what this solo gonna do with it. Nothing at all, it's just a bunch of engineers on it, so nothing really aggressive gonna happen here. But let's see how is they doing versus Ark. They're actually doing just fine for now. Though Ark is gonna take a lot of damage here from the Mantises and the AC Blend Delhi. And yeah, it actually seems like the corners are gonna get exchanged, as this one is gonna belong to the top team. Meanwhile, the one in the top left corner, in a matter of a few more minutes, is gonna belong to the bottom team. That is just a case of Ark Simcat, or should I say Insidious Noob, dealing with the enemy T1PDs. After all, when they die, there is gonna be nothing else to actually go... <coughs> Holy fuck. Yeah. You know what, boys? I actually might not be able to cast for much longer. I feel like my throat is kind of giving up. Let me go and grab a bottle of water. Yeah, sorry, I'm not feeling it. I might have to go and grab some... ...tablets for my throat later on. Okay, but it seems like it would help, so sorry for that. But yeah. It seems like after the early scuffles with the AI and the exchanging of the corners, the map is actually gonna be split... ...basically straight through the middle. Basically... Something like that, like this line. So, each of the teams is controlling their part of the map. We can see the wheel actually already finished his T2 ACV upgrade. While on the other hand, Runeshko is opting for the gun upgrade on his ACU. He's gonna go and finish it up in the next few seconds. 
And the engineer is dead, meaning the ace is still gonna take a few more seconds to finish the upgrade. The radar is up. Meaning that the really is now gonna have a really nice information about what is happening on the other side. Yep. It seems like the triads are gonna be just enough to go and push him back. There have been things happening in the middle. Oh my god, the AI for the bottom team actually took control of a DSPD here. Instead of reclaiming it or anything, it just went in and captured it. Whoa, what the hell? That's not something I was expecting to see. But yeah, there is also a big push being mounted up by Sladovnub and Delhi on the other flank. As we can see, the big army of T1 strikers belonging to the AI called Bingham is gonna go and try to hold the line versus the enemy forces belonging to the top team. Also, Arc Simcat taking a lot of damage from Delhi, who is basically just free fighting away. Though, unfortunately for him, it seems like the triads being set up by Arc Simcat are gonna be just enough to go and push him back. At least a little bit to go and buy some space. And with the gun upgrade being finally done, we can see that Delhi will have to go and actually concede this part of the map. Surprisingly, the, the, the AI just captured a civilian truck. And now it's just throwing it, bumping it all over the place with its own tanks. What is this madman? I guess the AI just have no clue what Geneva Convention is. Because I'm quite sure confiscating the civilian trucks full of civilians is not the best idea to then just go and throw it to the front line, so... But what do I know? It seems like our mothers actually made some monsters instead of AI. But yeah, it seems like Lunishko is really being forced back. He's trying to go and set up his own defense perimeter with the T2PDs. Although... I don't think it's really gonna work out, because the Utaushala, the Seraphim T2PDs, are always gonna go and lose the firebase fight against Triads or Oblivion turrets. Oh, and as to why they're gonna lose it, because these things are lasers. They have no area of the match. Meanwhile, the Triads have a beautiful 1.5 AoE, meaning that you can basically pick one here, click the attack button, and basically click it here somewhere just right in front of the enemy turret. And basically click it here, and in time it is actually gonna go and kill this PD with the area of effect. But yeah, it seems like the top left corner is gonna be firmly won by the bottom team. But the question is, can the AI actually hold the line versus Slado? Because his ACU together with the Mantises from Delhi is gonna be Wait a sec... Okay, never mind. It's the same color. I was... For a second I just thought that they have changed their nickname, but okay, never mind. It's just me going for crazy, okay? So don't mind that. <laughs> but yeah, it seems like the bottom right corner is looking a tad bit better for the top team. Especially with the MMLs actually proving to be quite a menace for Arc Simca to deal with. But with the ACU actually being forced to fall back to the TDPDs behind the line, it seems like this corner might actually be under threat from the enemy forces, as the team Justice for Telegram is actually doing very well. 
Though the question is with the FTX Commando ACU actually falling back. And Arc Simcat actually kind of overextending. This position here might prove to be a death trap. Commander under attack. Like there is ACU here. There is another ACU here with the nano repair and gun upgrade. Also Slado loop. Okay, it seems like Slado only have the gun upgrade. But still. Two ACUs versus this position is gonna be a really hard one to defend. Meanwhile, top side. We can see the AI actually making some gestures for this night. Ah, where is my water bottle? Yeah, I am losing my voice. I can feel it. Whoa. Anyway. I'm really sorry for I just didn't think it's gonna be that bad. I was hoping it's gonna get better because it was better, but it seems like speaking so much might actually not cut it. But yeah, anyway, let's take a look at the mass incomes because it seems like they're actually quite high. But for some reason the Oh okay, that's why. I was wondering why the bottom AI have only 100 mass per second income while the top one have already 150 mass, but that is because... Um, no, I'm actually just blind. For a second I thought that these 4 maxes were belonging to the AI, but no, it seems like Lunichko took them from it. <clears throat> and now, answering your question, Mr. Yu. The AI are actually not random factions, they are being picked by the teams. Oh my god, it seems like the drop actually managed to go and land here, but unfortunately for the Zooies, they might have crash landed and stayed alive for a second, but it seems like a few Yenzis are here on the position to go and kill them in no time. Meaning that there is basically gonna be no damage done here. But hey, coming back to the mass income it seems like the top team is actually 50 mass ahead compared to the bottom one and the funny thing is that they only have more mass income is because their AI is actually echoing better than the opposing team AI so yeah this little bad boy is the only reason they have more mass but let's take a look and see if the T3 air is already up on the field or not. Okay, it seems like the first ASF are hitting the field as Mr. Svatoslav is actually fielding the two ASF, bunch of gunships and some other stuff. While on the other hand, Mr. FTX Commando, okay, he actually also hit the T3 air stage. But what's more important, he actually have way more air factories available for himself. Like one, two... And already the third one being produced. Unlike Svatoslav, who only have a single T3 air factory running. He's upgrading the other one, but I'm not sure if this is the good choice. Or if anything, this... This T3 air placement, it's... Ho oh, no, never mind. It seems like I just missed someone dying, and it seems like... The AC will be actually belonging to not Ark Simcat, but actually to Mr. Dell. He's gonna go up in flames as he have been raised to the ground by the enemy pilars coming from Ark Simcat. That is very, very interesting. And sorry for missing it, but it seems like I'm really out of it. We can also see some... Stingers being filled by the wheelie. But Lunishko ACU with the gun upgrade and nano repair kit is proving to be way too much for the T2 ACUs to actually go and handle. Especially as it seems like the MMLs after the last buffs are proving to be really good at killing the enemy firebases. Oh no, the ACU blowing through the screen is coming closer and closer. He is gonna take a lot of damage. But the nano repair is gonna be just enough to make him stay alive for a while. 
The insidious noob actually seeing what is happening. He's gonna go and stop it to do uh, uh, Tito Suda braid on his ACU and instead move up to go and dish out some pain with his gun. Now, it seems like FX Commander, instead of actually going for the ASF, he's gonna go and opt in for a heavy wrestler spam. Which might either work out or not, depending on how fast he's gonna be Svatosov at building up the ASF presence. But yes, it seems like the bottom corner, after losing the daily ACU, is gonna go and actually slow down a little bit. As Lado, after seeing the... Wait, is... oh, whoa, 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 whoa. okay, I cannot change that. I cannot do it like that. Okay, we are back. I was just trying to change something in the overlay, but I shouldn't be doing that. But yes, anyway, it seems like Sladonup is not gonna go and risk pushing in, instead he's just gonna go and reinforce his position here. And the man is actually gonna go and pull out the Squall tactics. Man is gonna go and build the Swokel artillery emplacement. The clink hammers from UEF, and let's see what is actually gonna be in the range of it. Okay, that is actually a very, very nice position for the T2 artillery. It can hit the core base belonging to Ark Simka. It can actually go and snipe all of the stuff here, so yeah, it's a beautiful placement. The question is, is it actually gonna be in the proper spot or not? Because with how close it is to the front line, I can actually see it being overwhelmed by the AI and forces of Mr. Ark Simcat. Oh, we actually cannot see the scoreboard. I can actually try to fix it. Let me just go and take a look at it. Options. Um, where are the numbers? UI mod options. General. And okay, that is too much. Okay, please tell me in the next minute if this is actually gonna work out for you or not. Because right now the background should be way darker, so the scoreboard should be way easier to see. But it seems like I was actually missing a big push happening, as Mr. Wheelie is actually gonna go and make a really big titan push happening here. As the base belonging to Mr. Slado and the remands of the daily base are gonna come under fire. And it seems like the air fire is growing, as we can see the ASF belonging to Spatos are gonna go and try to squat down enemy restaurants. But it seems like the ASF numbers are just not here at all. As we can see, the rest is not even a single one. Okay, here is the first one dying. The other one is on real low HP, but the ASF numbers are dropping lower and lower. Second restaurant is down, but the ASF are only three in the sky. As it seems, nothing is gonna go and stop this push from happening here. As another Percival belonging to Slalom is gonna get shot down by a bunch of the enemy titans. We can see the T1 engineers getting shot down one by one. They are innocent little boys, but the Titans don't discriminate. They are here on a business, and they mean it. And also, Toton 20 on 1. Thank you very much for your Prime subscription. We appreciate it. But going back to the game, it seems like Sladon is actually gonna go and lose his T3 HQ, which is horrible. Or maybe not, because it seems like the Titan is belonging to Sladunup, and he actually is gonna get shot down as the enemy AI is gonna go and make a push into him as his AC explodes in a fit explosion of nuclear proportions. As we can see, the wall team just quitting on the spot. And GG, well played. It seems like the HQ dying was the final throw as the Team Justice for Billy takes the first game of the tournament. GG, well played. And 
and off we go to round number two. And now we will see AI duke it out versus AI. Actually, can we stay in this game and see how the AI is gonna fare? Or will it actually take too much time? But yeah, I feel like this was actually a pretty good game. A uh, game have been paused by Ark Simcat. Who is most likely not sure what is he supposed to do now. And okay, well, I guess we can just go and quit it. And wait for the next lobby to be actually hosted.